Okay, uh, very, very good morning uh, to all of you. Uh, first of all, just to save a few words of thanks, uh, uh, Mark has been very instrumental and uh, has helped, uh, I think, a lot in our, you know, our learning and knowledge transfer of uh, LabVIEW and so on. And also, first of all, I also like to thank uh, the NI team for uh, giving me the opportunity to share and present uh, in this uh, uh, event. Right. So today, uh, the topic of my sharing will be on this thing called the functional global variables. Uh, there's another thing which is not there, it's called the action engine. And another one will be the DVRs. So maybe can I just very quickly have a show of hands, uh, how many of you have not heard about functional global variables? Just a quick show of hands. Not heard of, or action engines. Have you all heard about action engines? Well, some of you may have, okay, I see a couple of hands. Uh, how, what about uh, data value reference, which is DVRs? Any of you have heard about DVRs? Oh, you have heard? Okay, so maybe some of you uh, would have be able to have some takeaways uh, in my presentation. So uh, first of all, uh, just to move on, uh, I would also like to uh, acknowledge thanks to uh, Nancy Hollenbeck for uh, her permission, uh, I saw her permission to uh, share these uh, materials. Actually, uh, she presented this at the NI Week 2013 in US. Uh, Nancy is actually a CLA in US and she's also a NI field architect. So she's a very experienced uh, uh, LabVIEW developer. All right. Of course, the title of her presentation was uh, uh, Everything You Ever Wanted to Know About Functional Global Variable. Okay, so my presentation we will not only just have slides, I will have some demos, which I think may, be, uh, may interest uh, many of you. Okay, now these are the original uh, Nancy slides may be found at the NI website. Or another website is this thing called the VI Shots. Anybody have visited this website, VI Shots? Okay, some of you have, thanks. So uh, the shot is actually uh, man, uh, managed by Michael uh, Avilotus. He's actually also a CLA in the in the US. So she, he does a lot of uh, podcasts and interviews and so on. So you may be able to get something uh, from by visiting this website and so on. Okay, so uh, the agenda very quickly. So what is functional uh, FGV in short, functional global variable, the benefits of FGV, uh, race condition, something that we should really sometimes think about when we are doing our programming. Eh? Okay, race condition is a very uh, true problem. Okay, but how we can overcome it through the use of things like action engines. And then uh, moving on to the, the, the next one will be this thing called the data value reference, DVRs. All right. So uh, I think uh, Mark shared very interesting insights about uh, running uh, applications where you have uh, you know, different uh, modules running and trying to communicate. Okay. So uh, you may have things like as shown over here where you have concurrent processes running. Maybe you have a user interface loop. You have another loop that is running the data logging and maybe the alarm uh, notification and so on. Okay? But uh, one of the key is also how do we uh, interact or share data okay, between these concurrent processes that are running. Right? So uh, the data storage mechanism okay, um, has just now one Mark mentioned about things like local variable and global variables. Right? So for personally for me, I would use it sparingly. I don't use a lot of these. Uh, as what Mark also mentioned, we might fail your... C you will fail your exam, right? If you use a lot of these. Uh... Yeah, correct, okay. So let, let me explain a little bit more why we should try to not use so much of these uh, global variables as well as local variables because of the issue of race condition, which I'll explain, okay? So you can see over here, I have many processes running trying to assess the data, all right? Now, the benefits of these uh, FGVs are basically, uh, for me, right, is to really to encapsulate the data, okay? You need to have use uh, different methods to assess those data. So in order to go into, uh, you know, you want to do some modification to the data, right, you have to go through a certain methods or the actions, if you like, all right? So um, now, uh, FGV itself does not eliminate the problem of race condition, but action engine does, okay, which I will explain in a moment. So uh, let's do a quick review of this uh, functional global variable, a quick review. A typical uh, sub-VI icon you would see will be something like this. Eh? Okay, uh, very simply, you have a numeric indicator, for example, you have an output, all right, and then you have a set of actions. Okay, typically you use a type definition, enum, and so on, so you can control the different actions. Eh? Okay, 
So, uh, okay, this is a general form. Have, uh, I believe many of the uh, audience in this room have already used uh, when you develop your sub-VIs in this kind of format. Eh? Now, any idea uh, what is the purpose of this shift register? Any, any idea? What's the purpose? It's an uninitialized shift register, right? And, and the purpose is to store data. Yes, very good. Thanks very much. And you notice that this sub-VI, right, or I call it uh, FGV, actually it so-called iterates only once, right? So upon, uh, you know, can, you can call these uh, VIs many times, okay? Then you execute the cases. So a typical uh, FGV, for example, if let's say you have a, uh, a function like this where you have a set and a get action, Right? So if you can set the uh, values, okay, you can pass this when you select the enum right, into the uh, set mode. Right? You're actually passing the data and you're storing it into the uninitialized shift register. And then, of course, you display it as well. And similarly, if you want to get the data, you can just switch it to the, the other case. Okay? And you iterate it once. Now, I think uh, in general, I think... Uh, uh, this one is a very common uh, uh, VI that many of you have already uh, you know, been using. And generally speaking, they tend to put the actions uh, at the top of the, the uh, VI itself, right? So uh, I think there's a, uh, a lot of benefit for this because it's kind of a self-documenting, right? As you can see. Now, uh, a bit of quick history. Now, FGV has... <laughs> <laughs> is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, FGV uh, has a long history. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's been called, uh, you know, let view to style global, uh, USRs, and so on. Okay. And uh, global variables, okay, or the introduction of uh, variables, uh, whether local or global, was only uh, started in let view 3. Uh, okay. I'm not as experienced as Mark. I only started to use let view when it was version 5. Uh, LabVIEW version 5, that was back in 1998. Yeah, okay. So uh, it's been used extensively in the community. And also, just now earlier, Mark shared about uh, this uh, newsletter, right? LabVIEW technical resource article. Now, so uh, in a way, what I'm going to show you here, I'll have a demo in a moment. This is a typical uh, global variable that you would use, right? You can actually create a numerical uh, indicator. You can do a read operation or you can do a write op uh, operation to it. So you basically can read to it and we can read, uh, write to it. Eh? Okay, so we usually can create a set of wrappers, right? A wrapper, API wrapper to wrap this uh, data around. So let's quickly show you a demo. Okay, now what you see here very quickly, over here, you can see that uh, we have, oops, how to get it on the screen, so switching it to the, the backlight view. Sorry, uh, how to how to show this? Ah, okay. Ah, okay, right. So what you can see uh, over here, right, I have the block diagram, okay, and the front panel. And uh, obviously, it is nothing really fantastic at this point, whereby, okay, you can create a uh, global variable, right, one that is set into the read mode, another one in the write mode. You can actually pass the data and store it into the uh, global variable, depending on what methods you use, eh, right? So the idea is that you can create as many uh, methods as you want, okay? All right, so if you quick, uh, do a quick run, you can see that you're actually passing uh, the data and you store it to the uh, global variable. Okay, so that's one. Okay, now, so instead of using uh, the uh, global variable, we can actually create this uh, set get FGV actually using the the uh, uninitialized uh, shift register, right? So let's 
quickly take a look at this one here. Yep. Okay. So you can see that over here, we actually uh, putting the methods okay, inside over here. So where we can increment, we can decrement, okay, and you can do many things over here. Right? But what, it, what this uh, wrapper does, this get uh, FGV does, is actually allows you to obtain the data, right? extracting the data from the uninitialized shift register and passing it out, as you can see over here. Sorry about this. Okay. Now, so moving on. Now, but do FGV actually eliminate race condition? Okay. Now, maybe first thing first, what is race condition? Okay. Now, you may be able to find uh, many definitions of it, but one of the definitions I like is that it's an undesirable conditions, right? Whereby the situation whereby a, a variable, right? Okay, is over, uh, uh, the value on the local variable, the variable is being overwritten before it is being read, okay? So it is a very undesirable situation, okay? And you may be able to find uh, some uh, articles that talks about it, but let me show you a simple demo here, okay? A demo which, will maybe help you to, il to illustrate the, this simple race condition. So over here, now the idea is this, okay? Now in this, uh, in this uh, while loop, okay, you have, a, to, uh, you have a while loop that is generating a random number generator between zero to one, okay? So what you're trying to do is yeah, we're trying to run a uh, running accumulation of the to find the average values, eh, okay, of this uh, of this uh, while loop here. So what you will see later on is that when I click the run button and I turn on the highlight execution, you will notice that because there's a race condition, the values of this uh, local variable, okay, will be first read, okay, and then the the value will be stored, okay, or remains at the wire, okay, before this division uh, node can execute. Eh. Okay, now let's take a look. So if I turn it, turn it on this, okay, you will see that initially when it first read off the value, right, the value of zero is being read onto this uh, local variable, right? Although the while loop is still iterating, the value is not finalized yet, right, as you can see, but the, the value is already on the wire itself. Okay, so when you click the stop button, right, you don't get the values updated here. Okay, the value is already on the wire itself, as you can see. So if I were to click a stop uh, here, you will notice that, okay, the value, the last lip value is 6.46, for example, but the initial value was being read off at the first instance. So your average output value is actually incorrect, as you can see over here, right? The average is zero, okay? So that's just a simple illustration of a race condition. Now, uh, I'm gonna to switch to another demo here, which is uh, on this one, uh, no race condition. Now in this demo, okay, the idea is to uh, execute the running of a single uh, while loop, okay, and then to determine the number of iteration that this while loop has run. Okay, it's a very simple one. Okay, now and at the same time, uh, what we should be observing is that the values of these two indicators, uh, these two indicators, right, the total iteration and this one here should be the same. Okay, so what I'm doing is that I'm just incrementing a value, a single value each time the while loop iterates, as you can see over here, right? So it gets the value 
So ob obviously you initialize to zero at the beginning. So you zero, you plus one, yeah? you increment, and then you store back to the FGB. Yeah? Okay? So you can see that the, the moment when I click the stop button, right, these two values will be identical. So if I click stop, Okay, it's the, it's the same value, eh, right? So there is no problem of race for that matter because you are using this, there's only one instance of this FGV, okay, on the block diagram itself. So no problem, right? But what, what happens if you need to have multiple instances of this FGV? Eh? Okay, so what will you do? What is going to happen? Do you know by default, right, sub-VIs are set to non re -entrance? I think some of you may know, okay, right? So if you have uh, two VIs running and you're calling the same instance of this FGV, right, there will be some blocking effect, right, as you know, okay? So you're going to get uh, the, the, the FGV will be caught. When this is caught, this has to hold, right, and so, and so on. So it's kind of like flip-flop, okay? So uh, in effect, FGV, in this case, for the get and the set uh, methods, right, it does not solve or eliminate this uh, race condition. Okay, so let's have a quick look. This. So now, the, the program kind of uh, remains the same. We are trying to get the total number of iterations eh, on these two uh, loops, as you can see. I have a while loop one, I have a while loop two, right? So I initialize. The reason why I wire this here is I want them to start together, right? Because it's a data dependency, right? The data flow programming. So I'll start these two at the same time. So what you will see is that when I run this in highlight execution mode, okay, you will see that uh, at any instance, the sub VI. This get will be called, right? Okay, so the initial value was zero, so it's plus one, right? Now, at the same time, before this one value is being stored to the uh, set FGV, the zero value came out. Eh? Do you notice? Do you notice there's this problem, right? So, so the point is that uh, this method of doing it, you're not protecting uh, what Nancy calls the critical section of the code eh? because you're modifying the data over here. Okay, so when I, uh, okay, I'll just speed up a bit. I'll switch off the highlight execution. Okay, you will notice that the values are different. Right, 102 and 151, for example. So because of the nature of this uh, FGV that is being set as uh, non re -entrance. Okay. So uh, the observation is that race condition has been observed. Uh, okay, in this uh, example. Okay, moving on. Now, the idea is to create this thing called the action engine, whereby you will encapsulate okay, all the methods okay, entirely into a single FGV. So you get, right, you will, if you need to modify, okay, and then you set all under one roof, eh, okay, called the action engine, okay, as shown over here. Now, as what uh, Nancy says, okay, now it actually protects the critical section of the code. Eh, okay, when you are doing the actions, okay, you modify, right? Let's say you increment or you decrement, eh, immediately the value gets back straight into the uninitialized, the, the shield register itself. Eh. Okay, so you will eliminate this problem. So uh, I have a demo here to show you. Uh, action engine. <coughs> Now, these uh, demos and my PowerPoint slides will be available for download. Huh? Okay, at the end of the, my presentation, I have a link in my Google Drive, so you can be able to download it as well. Okay, so you can see that I have this, right? Now, when I, when I run this uh, program and I click Stop, okay, notice that you do not have this issue, right? Because the... Uh, the, the FGV takes, take, takes care of itself eh, because the set into has a non re entrance, right? So you don't have this problem of a race condition. Okay? 
Any questions so far? Maybe can I just ask anybody have any questions so far? No? Okay, so uh, just to reiterate the point, the VIs are set to be non reentrants by default. They cannot run simultaneously. Okay. And, but the question is, what happens if you need multiple counters? Eh? Okay, 10 minutes. Okay. What happens if you need multiple counters or you need multiple timers eh, in your application? What will you do? Maybe, can I ask Sope? What will you do? Let's say if you need 10 of these counters or you maybe have 50 processors running, eh, what will you do? How do we make this? Eh? What will you do? Any, any idea? Oh, you solve. Let's see if I have maybe 10. Okay, I have. Yeah, correct. This is the most common way of doing it. You would rename the VI. Very good, right? But if you need 10 counters, you will probably have the same function but called different names, right? 10 times, right? Maybe counter 1, counter 2, and so on until counter 10, for example, right? And, and the other thing you might do is that you might change the icon. <laughs> correct? This is a typical uh, way that, you know, most, uh, I mean, uh, People will do. I mean, I've done that before myself. Eh? Okay, but there's a better way. Okay, let me share with you. Okay, there's a better way called using the data value reference DVRs. Okay, now this DVR is very powerful uh, mechanism because you are passing by reference. Okay, now inside the memory control uh, application uh, palette, uh, you can find this uh, DVR. Let me show you. Okay, you'll be able to find. Uh, okay, let me just pull this out. Okay, if you right click on your function palette, right, if you go to applications, okay, there's this thing called the memory control. So you have this uh, DVR, right, new uh, data value reference. Okay, you have the constructor and the destruct de destructor if you like. Okay, so what it does is this. Eh? Okay, it's a very powerful tool. I strongly encourage you to try. Okay, and you will see that you can create a reference. Okay, it's like a pointer pointing to the data that you are you are trying to use. It could be any data. It could be string, anything. Okay, array, especially array. Okay, now do you know that? Maybe one more thing. Do you know that if you have a array on a wire, right? And what happens if you fork the wire? Duplicates. Yeah, duplicates. And what happens to the memory? Doubles. Correct. And what happens if you forget more? Of course, the memory just it keeps increasing until to the point where by LabVIEW, uh, the engine cannot handle, right? If, it, if your array is very huge, eh? very large array. All right. Now, this is one way to eliminate the problem, okay? By using DVR, okay? They has this thing called the in-place element structure, as you can see over here. Okay, if you right-click on your here under structures, right? There's this thing called the in-place element structure. Okay, now let's see how this thing works. Eh? Very briefly, I think I only have about three minutes. Eh? Okay, so what happens is that you create a library, a LV lib. Okay, now you can actually create templates to the methods that you want to do. Okay, you can, you need to have a certain uh, steps. For example, you need to have the create. Okay, you, need, you perhaps have a count, that's for example. Okay, and you want to get count and so on. So all these methods, instead of uh, Having a FGV with all the uh, or action engine with all the methods, right? In the different cases, right? You're actually tearing it apart, eh? okay? Into individual uh, VIs like this, eh? okay? Now it is a very powerful method eh? because, okay, what you do is you are actually creating that you are passing the reference. You don't pass the data. You pass the reference, okay? You use the in-place element structure to operate on the data on the space itself on the memory space itself. Okay, and then you put it back to the reference. Okay, so let's take a look here. Uh, I'll show you a demo. Okay, I have a demo here. Okay, now what it does is that this demo actually uses the event structure. Okay, what it does, okay, as I run this um, VI, okay, now you notice that I can create the counter, right, dynamically. Okay, so if I say I want to add two counters, right? I can increment these counters, right? Or I can decrement if I want to. I can dynamically add 
another counter or a few more if I like, I can increment. Okay? So to me now, they are separate, different counters. Eh? You see? So you're actually passing it the reference. Now, if you look at the code itself over here, okay? Now, what you're trying to do is that when you do an add, right? When you try to add the uh, counter, what you're trying to do, you're trying to build that reference. Okay, you build the reference and you pass this reference to this shift register in this uh, while loop here. Okay, now when we increment, okay, because this one is set to enable indexing, the reference get passed into here. You don't pass the data, you pass the reference. So over here, this uh, VI actually take care of the incrementing part using the in place uh, element structure. So if I were to very quickly uh, show you this VI wrapper. So what it does is something like this. All right. So in this in-place element structure, you pass the reference to it, you, you will extract the data out inside the in-place element structure. Then you do your operations. right? Then you put the data back. And then you continue on with the reference. Eh? So that's the idea. Eh? So you are able to scale. right? In case I need 10 timers, or 10 counters or whatever. You just operate it by reference in this case. It's a very, very powerful uh, mechanism. So I, I use it quite a lot. Okay, so just to uh, share with you on that. I think, okay. Okay, so the DVR demo. Yeah, I think I've come to the end of my presentation. I think I have about 30 seconds left or something like that. So if you have any question, uh, Feel free to also uh, discuss with me uh, over lunch. And uh, I also have this Google link that you can download my demos and also the PowerPoint slides. Yeah, okay. And I also like to strongly encourage um, the community, the audience here, okay, to go visit some of these very useful websites, okay, like the NI community where you have forums and stuff. And of course, the one that I also like to go is to lavag.org, which Mark also has shared. Okay, you may be able to find a lot of useful quotes and, and discussions going on there. Yep, okay, I think I've come to the end.